what, what do you need for a billiard to be chaotic? So there are certainly situations where a billiard cannot be chaotic. I don't think that people necessarily know that answer fully. Um, because, for instance, like my initial my initial guess would be to say that you need at least one defocusing surface, right? I think that's what people would generally consider like um, like the bare minimum. But we already know of systems that don't have a defocusing surface at all and yet are chaotic, right? That's Bunimovich Stadia. So if you look at Bunimovich Stadia, there's no defocusing there, right? Everything has curvature that would indicate that there's some sort of focusing behavior going on, and yet billiard flow is chaotic. Billiard flow on Bunimovich Stadia are chaotic. Um, but, but if I shoot, if I shoot a vertical trajectory, you know, from the center of the billiard, then that'll just bounce, right? Right, but the idea is that uh, those trajectories, uh, those are uh, a small number of trajectories. In fact, they're, they're measure zero, right? Because they would have to be only the, the trajectories that are on this strip and only the trajectories where your uh, initial velocity is exactly vertical. So the idea is that if that's perturbed even slightly, then you get chaotic behavior. Are, can you, are those stadia, um, the discontinuities at the uh, intersections of the, the straight lines and the curvature, um, that, that's what introduces the singularities that lead to chaos, right? Isn't that what, what I don't know, but it, could that be the source instead of having um, the, the, the positive curvature? I don't think so. My understanding is that it's not so much like if there is a discontinuity in curvature, you all automatically get chaotic flow. Uh, for instance, I think there are plenty of examples in polygonal billiards. Um, so let's say I had like a square where the flow is not chaotic, but there's very clearly discontinuities in the curvature. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's quite as simple as um, if there's a discontinuity in the curvature, then suddenly chaos arises. I feel like um, the period three implies chaos thing could be helpful here. If you can look at the setup and see a, a, a cycle in the punk ray map that recurs after three hits, wouldn't that imply the system's chaotic, I guess? At least a check to sure, see if it I, is chaotic. Not to see yeah, if it's I guess, not. Right, I guess that's my issue though, right? So like determining what are the minimum conditions on yeah. a billiard table to induce chaos. Um, I think that as a whole is still an open question. People have like books and books on, on if you make certain assumptions, you can show certain things, but the absolute minimum conditions required to induce chaos in a billiard system, I don't think are known. Um, Do you know if the circle is chaotic for billiards? I'm guessing it's not, right? I guess yeah, every, th or it's not, right? It's not. In fact, actually, it's it's actually uh, there's some really interesting patterns that you get with the circle billiard. So here's an example. So so the idea is actually so for the circle billiard, the flow will sort of trace out these sort of trajectories all along, and if you have a uh, rational rotation number, you get a periodic orbit. If you get an irrational rotation number, you fill out sort of a section of the circle. But in fact, uh, with the circle, there's a whole section on the interior for every initial starting condition that you never visit. And that depends on each individual starting condition as to like which is the spot you don't visit. But it's actually, it's profoundly not ergodic, which is really strange. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see a paper uh, like that just yeah. derives like the the forward map or something it would be awesome. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, let me answer that question first, and then I'll. I'll I, I think I actually have. Where did I put it? Uh, right. So there's this book right here. Let me go to the top of it. This was recommended by one of my advisors. Um, so if you're interested, uh, there's this book by Chernov and Markarian, 
um, on chaotic billiards that sort of walks through um, the main examples of billiards in a circle, billiards in a square, um, basic nice. constructions. Um, some of the some of the things are that we didn't talk about at all today are like what are the minimum conditions on the boundary? So like what boundaries are admissible? But this book sort of starts to go into all the gory details there and sort of how you can. Um, and also there's there's some strange things that happen with the flow that we didn't talk about. Let's say that I have a flow and I consider two points heading towards the boundary, one sort of behind the other, then I'll experience a discontinuity in time where when the first one hits the boundary, it goes through this sort of reflection map, whereas the second one hasn't gone through that yet. So there's a discontinuity in time there. But also, if you have a convex scatterer, so these defocusing objects, you can experience actually a discontinuity in space as well through these things called grazing collisions. So you can see that like if this particle were to be exactly tangent to the scatterer, then things slightly to its left will scatter off and things to its right will continue straight on. So this is actually a discontinuity in the flow map, even from the spatial perspective. Um, so yeah, again, all those details uh, are available. And yeah, again, I just kind of want to say that in general, I don't want anyone to walk away from this thinking that billiards or symplectic dynamics or Hamiltonian flow is like solved in any way, because that's definitely not the case. Uh, but I, I just wanted to sort of give a brief introduction to these ideas. So let's say I had a circle with no scatterers. The question is, uh, I, or at least, you know, how I'm interpreting the question is, can I do a symmetry reduction there? Um, continuous symmetry reduction is something you can do, and it's something we'll talk about. Um, but visualizing it becomes much harder. So we'll talk about the notion of a Lie group which uh, sort of generalizes these continuous symmetries. Um, in this case, the Lie group would just be rotation. A and you can do a symmetry reduction with respect to that, um, but that's a few lectures away. If people are interested in that, I highly recommend uh, either reading ahead uh, to week five or um, you know, agreeing to do the, the talk for week five, because uh, we're gonna get all into those details. So if I if I know, for example, that the that the stability matrix that you wrote uh, always gives me, let's say, unstable eigenvalues, right? Mm -hmm. um, expanding eigenvalues for any trajectory, is that enough yeah. to say that the system is going to be chaotic? So that that essentially reduces to a uniformly expanding map on. The, well, I guess not uniformly expanding, right? Because I, I, I'm not necessarily, you're not necessarily telling me if there's some, well, no, there should be, right? Yeah, so if it always gives me a positive constant, there should be some minimum value, which means it's uniformly expanding. Um, and if it's uniformly expanding, then it should equipartition along the boundary. I think that's enough, um, but again, I'm not certain. I think so too, because, you know, chaos needs uh, two conditions, right? Instability and then boundedness of the phase state, right? So if the billiard is bounded and then and then you know that the dynamics is everywhere unstable, and not marginally yeah, I, stable, yeah, stable. I, I, then? Yeah, I guess that that's my, my concern. And, and I think maybe this is just like my math, that there are some issues where um, if, you, if you had a section where something was unstable, but it was increasingly small, how, how small that instability is, you, you could be getting quite a bit of expansion, but that expansion could be uh, happening so slowly that it doesn't factor in to fully exploring the space, right? So 
Um, I think you're probably right, but I just have a few reservations that I, I, I don't necessarily feel comfortable saying for sure that if, ever, if it's everywhere positive, you have the onset of chaos. Well, in the case of billiards, you, you don't have any any dissipation, right? So you, you cannot, like, you have, you have to explore the whole, the whole face space if you are uh, unstable and there's no marginality. Because in the case of the Bunimovich Stadium, you have a family of trajectories that are bouncing balls, right? Yeah. So if you get those, you stay there. There's no way you can go anywhere. But yeah. if you take uh, if you take any unstable trajectory, then you will end up visiting the whole face space, and that's but that's not trivial to to actually in the case of Bunimovich Stadium, that's not trivial to to prove. That's why yeah. Bunimovich proved so famous because right. proving that it's ergodic is not easy. But in other cases, maybe simpler cases where you can just uh, show that the the stability matrix always gives you unstable eigenvalues. And if you have done, if you if you already treated the Lyapunov exponents, that results in always like positive Lyapunov exponents, right? So that means that together with the bounded motion, you're going to you're going to visit the whole phase space, and also you're going to have chaos as well. So sh showing that something visits every part in phase space is not trivial. Um, for expanding maps, uniformly expanding maps, we have quite a bit of understanding. Um, but I guess I guess my thought is like, even if for every single trajectory you can do it, it works. It should work. If though there's even a very 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 small patch where that expanding direction becomes marginal then that can change the whole situation very quickly, right? That loss of hyperbolicity in even one point um, can totally dominate the long-term dynamics. So that, that's my only concern, I guess, is like, I'm not sure. So when you do the symmetry reduction to a circle, yeah. right? Yeah. So does the circle reduce, reduce to a point effectively? So, so uh, effectively what it would reduce to is um, this line segment. It's not even a, a line segment really because this thing is is kind of like a like a toroidal map in that it's sort of mapped onto itself. Um, so your um, what's it called? Your stability analysis turns into just uh, effectively like a, a one dimensional map that you then can sort of uh, or not one dimensional, sorry. It's um yeah, yeah, one dimensional. Um because it's a point and then it has the all possible uh what's it called? It's, um orientations going into that. Okay. And for the I for always, the circle map in particular, I actually oh sorry. Go ahead. But it always has the same curvature, right? It yeah, yeah exactly. So for for the circle map, it's uh, it's especially boring um, because the map in terms of these angles is just um, addition of a, a given angle, right? You just right. add whatever the curvature gives you. Um, and yeah. so that's how you uh, recover all these behaviors that you would expect from like an irrational rotation of the circle. Um, because effectively in that coordinate, that's all the dynamics are is they're just, they're just a, a rotation of the circle. 